our last episode. I hope you guys didn't miss us too much. We are nearly at 6,000 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed yet, now is the perfect time. Thank you. This week, we're going to be looking at the Lord's Prayer. So we'll look at the verses in the Bible. Some of our presenters will take on a special quiz. We'll have a craft, prayer, and finish with a final thought. So grab your drink and a biscuit, and let's do this. When you're stuck at home with time to spare, can't go outside, you're not going anywhere. Why don't you pull up a chair or pull up a suit, tune into virtual Sunday school. We have a craft to do and a story or two. Say hello to Nat, she's stuck at home too. Why not tune in to virtual Sunday school? The Lord's Prayer can be found in Matthew chapter 6 verses 9 to 13. Now I don't know which version you might know, as there are a few different versions out there as it's been modernised. But the version that I learned, and the one I like, has some old school language in it. Now today I'm going to be joined by various friends throughout the episode, starting with Ollie. So Ollie, why don't you break that prayer down? Hello! Now I'm talking to you from my special presenter stool. That's right. I have to have a special presenter stall because when I stand up, this happens. Hello, you can see me, yes? Unbelievable. Anyway, the Lord's Prayer. Did you know this is the only thing the disciples specifically asked Jesus to teach them how to pray? It's so cool. So it's really, really important, all right? And when it pops up in Matthew verse nine, Jesus teaches us that is how we, me and you, should pray. So let's break it down. I break it down now. Our Father who art in heaven. Well, that's an easy bit. God is our Father and he lives in heaven. It's a bit like when you write a letter to someone. You might start, dear whoever the letter's to. So like, dear God. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed is like an old school way of saying holy. So what we're saying is that God's name is holy. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So here we're praying for God's kingdom to be here on earth. God is the king of earth, God is the king of the universe, he's the king of everywhere and that's what we're asking, that his kingdom would come here. Give us this day our daily bread. <coughs> now you might not eat bread every day or even at all, which is a shame because it's lovely, but here what we're asking for is God to give us our daily food, what we need to survive. So you could just as easily say, give us today our daily rice, or pasta, or veg, or meat, or quinoa. Who eats quinoa? So we're asking God to provide what we need. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Now you might recognize the word trespass because we do use it today, but we usually see it in signs that say, no trespassing, go away. And it means you probably shouldn't go there. Now if trespassing means you shouldn't go there, it's easy to remember that in the Lord's Prayer, it means sin. So we ask God to forgive us for the things that we shouldn't have done, and then we forgive others for the things that they shouldn't have done. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So we're all tempted from time to time. That person has quinoa, I will steal their quinoa. I mustn't steal their quinoa. So here we're asking God to help us not do the things that we know we shouldn't be doing, even when we really want to do them. What even is quinoa? It's like a, a grainy thing that you make a cold salad with. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever 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 and ever. Now, side note, this last bit might not actually be in your Bible. It's a long story, but the people that translated the Bible, they couldn't agree whether it was in the original or not. So, you know, but it's good, it's cool. Whether it was there or not, the words are still true and it is a great way to finish our prayer. So we're saying it's all God's. Everything is his. He's in charge. He's in control. Amen. And amen is how we end prayers. And it's like a kind of way of saying, mm, I agree. Amen. So we can say it all together and we agree with peoples and we can even say it to our own prayers like, mm, amen. Amen. 
Jesus gave us this example of how we should pray, and it's a great prayer, and we should pray it often. Also, if you break it down, break it down now, it's also got a few key themes. Praise, hallelujah, please, and forgiveness. So we can use the Lord's Prayer as a basis for our own prayer. We can ask God for things, praise God for things, and ask for forgiveness. But if you say it with the words that are straight from the Bible, it's like you're joining in with the thousands of people all over the world that have said this prayer for thousands of years. It's like we're all praying together. Amen. And just like any prayer, you can pray anytime, anywhere, when you're at home, when you're out and about, or you might even pray at school. What a great prayer to unite Christians all over the world in praying to God. Amen. Hello! So in the Lord's Prayer, it says, give us this day our daily bread. So uh, to tenuously link to that theme, we've got a quiz all about bread mm. for Jordan and Ollie to participate in and for you guys to join in with at home. And of course, in the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread doesn't necessarily just mean bread. It's, it's, it's like the meals that you eat. It's the whole food, uh -huh. the whole meal. The whole, me the whole meal. Uh -huh. Whoever wins this one get, is getting a whole meal. Are we actually? Sort you out with some dinner, you're getting a meal. I don't trust it. Gen like, like genuine, proper. Yep. Whoever wins. Round one. Unos. General bread trivia. <laughs> Why have I got a, why have I got a tiny one and he's got a mask? <laughs> That's all we had. That's all we had. You have to go with it. So for round one, I'm going to ask a question. You guys need to write it on your board, turn them over at the same time, and we'll see who has got the correct answer. Question number one. Unos. What does unleavened mean? And show your answers. Without yeast. <laughs> <laughs> Unrisen, no yeast. I assume that's what it's Well, I wrote unrisen first, and I was like, that doesn't make sense. And you're both right. Question number two. Which one of these isn't a real bread? Marble bread, circle bread, or tree trunk bread? Show your answers. Circle. Circle. And the correct answer is tree trunk bread. Ah, oh, I thought it was a trick question. So you're both yeah. wrong. Question number three. What does panini mean in Italian? And show your answers. Grilled slash heated. Pan cooked. And the actual answer is sandwiches. Ah. Just means sandwiches. It means a plural of sandwiches. Okay, question number four. What is the French word for bread? Oh. Do you know this one at home? What's the French word for bread? Turn your boards round now. I might have spelled it wrong, but it's pat like Bread. <laughs> <laughs> With the accent. <laughs> bread. <laughs> Is it pan? A pan? Like pan? Yes! Oh, yes, right! Pan of chocolate! Come on! Yes. Surprisingly, it is not bread. <laughs> no, no, it's bread. <laughs> With the accent. Last question of round one. Thought I'd go for an easy one here. Thank you. In bread making, salt controls the action of the yeast and improves the flavour of the bread. However, what is the danger in adding too much salt? And reveal your answers, please. Like overrising. It tastes bad. <laughs> it may taste a bit saltier, but the main issue is that it inhibits the yeast, it stops the yeast. Uh, so it slows so it down, it, it's the opposite. It ah, doesn't rise very well. I mean, well. technically I wasn't wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and no points off that one either. Uh, you guys are not doing well. <laughs> Round two, quick fire questions, one after the other. You have to identify what sort of bread am I talking about. Ollie, mm. it's an Italian bread known as slipper. It's the Italian word for slipper. Comfy bread. No, I'm passing it to Jordan. Uh, baguette. No, it is ciabatta. Jordan. Yeah. An English bread filled with holes served with tea. Scone. No, it's not a scone. Ollie. Tea cake. It's not a tea, it's a crumpet. Oh, of course it is. Oh, uh, yeah. Ollie. Yes. A very sweet and soft French bread. Brioche. Point to Ollie. Jordan. Yes. A Jewish flatbread. Pizza. Ollie. A Jewish flatbread. What's it like? Matza. Matzo, I'll take it. There's another yeah. point for Ollie. Ollie, mm. an English bread dusted with cornmeal. An uh, English muffin? Breakfast muffin? An English muffin! Hey. Oh. Jordan, a South American unleavened bread. Is it, a, a tar is it like a tortilla? Tortilla! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oliver, yes. a bread ring associated with New York. Bagel. Jordan, a soft Indian bread served with curry. It's a papa dom. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. Ollie. No. 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 No.
a soft Middle Eastern bread, sometimes comes in pockets. Goes great with hummus. Ah, pitta. A long French bread. Baguette. This one's a tough one, you definitely won't get it. A Swedish crisp bread. Potato chip? Jordan, a Swedish crisp bread. Well, it's quite obvious, isn't it? It's a uh, snagen. <laughs> it is kanakidrot. I was, I, you were close. I did not get that one. That's what I was <laughs> saying. It was an obvious. That's what I was trying Easy. to say. And Jordan, last one. A German sweetbread often served at Christmas. Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, no idea. Ollie. Stolen. Yeah! Oh, yeah. yeah! Look at this. <laughs> that little smug knowing the answer. <laughs> okay, and bonus round. What would you call one of these? Mm. Bread roll. Yeah. Surely. If you put chips in it, whatever shape it is, it's a butty. It's a butty. It's got to be a butty if you put chips <laughs> end in it. Of end of story, it's a butty. There's, there's no points for that one because the, it's so divided on what it is depending on where you live. So it means that one of these is actually a bread bun or a bread roll or a morning roll or a bread cake or a tea cake or a lardy cake or a balm cake or a, a balm or a cob or a bat or a batch, an oggy, a stotty, an oven bottom, a scuffler, a softy, <laughs> Or if it's big enough in Liverpool, it's a bin lid. No, it's a bin lid. Really? Yeah. Mm. So at the end of our bread themed quiz, eight. Whoa. Wow. And Jordan has four. <laughs> Oliver Ward, you have won yeah. a whole meal. There you go. A yeah. whole meal of bread. Thank you, there you go. so much. Yeah! <laughs> I, mean, I do love bread. Did you join in at home? How did you do with the bread quiz? Let us know if you managed to get them all right and what on earth you might call one of these. Craft time. Today we are going to make a beautiful plaque for our walls with the Lord's Prayer. And we're going to be testing out your calligraphy skills, which just means we're going to test out your fancy handwriting. You will need some lollipop sticks, white card, coloured card, string, scissors, glue and pens or pencils. First, cut a piece of white card in half and then a little bit smaller again, like this. Next, we're going to write out the Lord's Prayer on that card. Now, I want you to do the fanciest writing that you can do. Maybe it's all joined up or maybe it's got some nice swirls on it or maybe you can do bubble writing. Feel free to try out your styles before choosing which one to go on your plaque. Whatever you want. Next, cut a coloured piece of card in half. We're going to stick the Lord's Prayer card onto the coloured card so it creates a nice coloured border. Stick your lollipop sticks at the top and at the bottom like this, making sure that they're sticking out a little bit. If you want, you could even colour in the lollipop sticks or just leave them plain. Then cut out a piece of string and tie it to the ends of the lollipop sticks at the top of your plaque. And there we have it. You can hang your fancy Lord's Prayer plaque up anywhere in your house. The Lord's Prayer is something we can all join in with and we can all say together. So all of our VSS friends are going to join in to say it and you guys are going to join in at home too. Let's go! Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. And so, a final thought. The Lord's Prayer is a prayer that Jesus gave us. He literally said, pray like this. It's a prayer that unites Christians all around the world and it's a fantastic example of the sorts of things that we can say to God in our own prayers. A couple of weeks ago, we made the B attitude bunting. Let's see how you guys got on. Bees, 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 B bee attitude, bees. Okay, let's have a look. And be set by beautiful, bee dazzling, buzzy beings. And with good behavior, be for long, I may befriend one or two of them. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, what do you call a chunky bee? A beefcake. A beefcake! <laughs> oh, what are two of these bees? Be long in an art gallery. You've done an amazing job, guys. Look at that one. Or rather, behold that one. Oh, that one's underneath the other one. It's beneath the other one. And that's a custom one. You know, I can tell it's a bee spoke. <laughs> And then one at the end, that's falling behind. Ah, oh, I'm sorry, that's enough bees. Be gone. This week, we want to see your beautiful Lord's Prayer plaques. Ask your grown up to head over to our Facebook page or Instagram account to get in touch. Plus, if you haven't seen, we are taking part in the Virgin Money sponsored events to raise money for Virtual Holiday Club. We're looking for people to do a sponsored event and raise a hundred pounds towards Holiday Club. And perhaps that could be you. Think you could get involved? So if you want to take on a challenge and help raise money for Virtual Holiday Club, then ask your grown-up to check out the link in the description below for all the info. For now, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you for our next VSS episode in two weeks. Bye for now. Why not tune in to Virtual Sunday School?